Uh, well, this is all about the get and put principle, um, or at least I've seen it called that. And uh, it tells you basically when you ought to be thinking about using uh, the wildcard with super and when you should think about using it with extends. And um, to start with, let's just take a look at a few very simple things. Uh, this is all pretty obvious. Um, we've got a couple of types here other type 1, other type 2, my type. Obviously abbreviated. We've got this method m here that takes a um, parameter of my type 2 and returns my type 1. So let's have a look. Supposing we've got something that says ot1 equals mt and um, mt equals ot2. So what does that mean? What do we know about if that if we see that and it works? What do we know about it? Um, pretty obviously, we know that. Um, what it means is that other type 1 must be a super type of my type and uh, this down here says that um, other type 2 must be a subtype of my type and if we see something like that what it means is that other type 1 must be a super type of my type 1 and um, other type 2 must be a subtype of my type 2. Okay, this is all pretty standard stuff, nothing unusual about that. I'm just pointing out really what is obvious. Now let's take a look at this with generics. Um, suppose we've got this class here, GN, which is a generic class with a type T, and all it does is uh, store T like that. Now if we have this class test1, and uh, we instantiate this uh, generic class, or at least uh, we define a type of that uh, generic class. So we say gn of some type, which we call g0, and uh, gn of uh, something which extends b, we call geb for extends b. And uh, similarly, we got this, which is uh, uh, g super b, got super type there. Uh, right, well let's take a look at um, some of the implications here. We've got OT1 type 1, OT2 type 2, and if we have uh, OT1 equals G dot T, what does that mean? Well, that means that we know that uh, T is of uh, uh, some type, right? There's G naught. So what it means is that um, type 1 must be a super type of some type. And here, it must mean that uh, type 2 must be a subtype of some type. That's what that would have to mean. Now, if we look at the same thing again, this time using um, GEB, so it's uh, with a wildcard extend form, extending B, uh, what does the same thing mean here? Well, here you have to think a little bit more, but it's straightforward what it means is that um, uh, this is uh, something which extends B right so uh, type 1 uh, must be a super type of B for that to work and down here it must mean that type 2 has got to be the null type because we don't actually know um, we don't know just precisely what, uh, how far down in the tree this thing might be. So uh, we only know that it's um, a subtype of B. We only know it extends B, right? So it's got to be some sort of uh, subtype of B. We don't know how far down in the tree it might be. So the only thing we can tell for certain is that OT2 must be null if that works. Okay, let's try the same thing now with super. Super, it's the other way round. Uh, type 1, in this case, must be object. The reason for that is we don't know how high up in the tree it could be. I mean, GSB, that thing there, could be a type object. So, this thing on the left here must be object. Basically, it can't be anything else. So, anything that's going to be acceptable there is object. And simply for this, we only know that um, type 
uh, type 2 must be a subtype of B because um, uh, this thing is some super type of B so um, we can't go above B but since we're doing the assignment um, it must be B or less that's being um, the, this type here basically it must be B or less so that leads us to an implication then um, if you're storing data um, if you, you should choose super the type because um, if you look um, uh, storing stuff in B that's um, uh, yeah storing stuff in um, in B that's okay see because type 2 is, is we just know that it's a subtype of B so so that's fine there and if you're retrieving stuff you should use extend because um, extends there yeah, that, that works fine we're not dealing with the null type there and um, if you look at it the treatment for any method in here uh, any method in this um, this generic uh, uh, type here is going to be the same because um, uh, this side is going to uh, look like uh, retrieving and that um, is just going to look like uh, storing so because um, uh, that's basically what you do when you're passing a parameter you're basically storing the um, actual uh, parameter into the formal parameter there okay, so uh, there's nothing special then about uh, methods they, they just can be dealt with simply in the same sort of way as you deal with um, fields like this so that's a general principle. Now if you're doing both, if you're both storing and retrieving data, then the thing to do is to choose a specific type. And uh, that's generally uh, that's it, I think.